Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Nvidia Quadro, a brand that needs no introduction. For decades, these professional grade GPUs are designed and used in a big variety of applications and range of industries including engineering, architecture and even scientific research. What we are looking at today is the RTX A2000. Those of you following my channel would know I've already covered this tiny beast, link is in the video description. This tiny but mighty card was released in August 2021 with a MSRP of 449 USD. However, in the midst of silicon shortage and the scalper pandemic, this obviously translated into a higher retail price of around 580 USD. Low profile bracket was included. Being Quadro, this Ampere-based GPU was not competing directly with gaming GPUs, but one can see, in terms of specs, with its 3328 CUDA cores, it sits roughly somewhere between the RTX 3050 and the RTX 3060. Originally, the A2000 was only available as a 6GB card, the 12GB part became available later, both with support for ECC. The A2000 uses PCI Gen 4 bus and doesn't require any additional power connectors since its TDP is limited to just 70 watts. This of course results in much lower clock speeds rated at 562 MHz base clock and 1200 for the boost, but in reality car typically sits around 1350 MHz. Calling all ultra small form factor builders, those looking to upgrade their low profile office PC as with support for ray tracing and the latest in upscaling technologies, A2000 is one heck of an interesting card. Since I'm not a professional, some of its potential might be wasted, but let's take it apart anyway. No matter how often I look at it, it always gets me just how small the A2000 really is. Card is half height and two slots wide. I think it looks very subtle and still somehow elegant with the gold Nvidia branding. The I.O. offers 4 mini display ports, which does fit its professional aim. The black PCB looks very neat and gives the card a premium feel. Being this small, it weighs nothing. To be more precise, just 317 grams or 0.69 pounds. Nice. Keeping the professional theme, I had to whip out my Torx size 6 and size 8 screwdriver bits. There are 10 screws in total to be removed. The fan header cable is super short, one has to be very careful not to pull too hard on it. And there it is, all of it. The small heating requires a little wiggle, but it was not hard to remove. PCB is taken mostly by the GPU core, it's so tiny, well, it's exactly the same as one found on the GeForce 210, the slowest card I've ever tested. Just think about the unreal amount of efficiency with the A2000 per square inch of PCB. Thermal paste was more on the dry side, nothing that a blob of fresh MX4 wouldn't solve. Time to assemble the card and move on to some benchmarking. Let's start with Blender's GPU render of the classroom. A2000 took 1 minute and 10 seconds to finish the render. I only have the 3080 and 3080Ti's result on hand, but more GPUs will be added soon. In 3 Mark Time Spy, A2000 pushed over 6300 points, beating the Titan X by a small margin. Firestrike Extreme sees the A2000 at nearly 7200 points, but it's still below the Titan X. In Heaven Benchmark, the A2000 was faster by the GTX 1060 by around 15%, however, still slower than the Titan X by around 20%. Next, we look at power to score ratio, and this actually made me change the range of this graph, yeah, yeah, a mind-blowing result of over 40 points per every watt that the tiny A2000 used during the benchmark. It's simply amazing. Are we ever going to surpass this value? I'm not so sure, let me know your opinions in the comments down below. Things are not as nice when MSRP is taken into consideration, the A2000 barely offers mediocre value here. 
And the A2000 fares even worse when we look at the second-hand market value, sitting at the very bottom of the chart even below both dual GPU red monsters. Let's now jump into games, starting off with Cyberpunk of course. Despite technically being a quadro, the A2000 enjoys support for Nvidia's upscaling technology, which meant I could dial in more eye candy. 1080p high settings and quality DLSS preset run smoothly. Night City looked stunning and the average of 66 FPS with 1% lows above 50 are what I call impressive. I still can't believe the A2000 was barely pulling 70 watts doing this. Modern Warfare 2 next. I got into a very nasty round where surviving for more than a 10 seconds was nearly impossible, but maybe it's just me. I'm happy to admit. With extreme preset and DLSS on quality, A2000 pushed a solid 96 FPS average. I'm of course aware this will change from map to map. A new addition to my testing suite is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I'm only an hour or so into it, but must admit, this game offers great visuals. With high preset, I saw 72 FPS on average and 1% lows at 52. A little bit of Red Dead Redemption 2 never hurt, that was until flamethrower equipped horses decided to ruin my fun. I was just casually minding my own business, here and there, throwing the lasso around at the forks of San Denis, you know, the usual stuff. Anyway, I've dialed in all possible graphical settings to high and once again used the quality DLSS preset. The A2000 managed to push 65 FPS on average with 1% lows just below 50. No complaints here, other than the flamethrower horses. Here we go, another new addition to testing was Far Cry 6 and instead of just running the benchmark, I've decided to crack on with the story. Admiring the beauty of the island, I've dialed in high preset and also ticked the HD textures. A2000 delivered a solid result with 75 FPS on average, this was really smooth and enjoyable experience. Dirt Rally 2 next. A quick blast just using the turbocharged Fiesta from Hell proved to be quite the challenge. And by that I mean myself, ending dead last on all three runs. But unlike me, the A2000 was always delivering. With Ultra Preset and 2x MSAA, I saw an average of 88 FPS and 1% lows at 66. Another game I finally got on with was Shadow of Tomb Raider. Here, using the high preset and quality DLSS resulted in over 100 FPS average. Anyone else had to Google how to get the bloody bridge to come up? Closing the game testing with yet another new addition, the very cinematic Death Stranding, aka The Walking Simulator. Game run without a hitch and with a very high preset, I saw an average of nearly 96 FPS. Let's wrap up. The A2000. What a card. I'm not going to lie, this was seriously impressive. With no external power, smaller than small form factor and support for the latest upscaling technologies, I was blown away. The amount of performance offered by the A2000 is sufficient for even the latest AAA titles. However, as observed during today's testing, the 6GB VRAM buffer might be its biggest weakness, suggesting the 12GB model will age a lot better and perhaps it will even allow you to step up to 1440p in some games. This card defines the word efficient, but does come at a price. For about 280 USD, it's simply too expensive to be considered for most gaming PCs, where a 3060 or perhaps a 6600 XT makes more sense. But then, you're building a compact, low volume build, there is no such card like this. What's your opinion of it? Would you consider buying this card? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. I hope to see you all in the next one.